Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Colin Corby here today, and he is a specialist when it comes to detoxing yourself digitally. He is a, de- detach, uh, he is a digital uh, detox specialist, and he's going to go into that, what that actually means, and the benefits of detaching yourself digitally from all the technologies around us. And the and he has just such great knowledge in this field and he has so much to offer. I want you to really be open to what you're gonna hear right now because it could actually help you mentally, physically, spiritually, and just help your overall health, even with business and stress. So Colin, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hi, well, I'm Colin Corby. I'm uh, the CEO and uh, founder of Technology Wellbeing. Um, I'm a digital detox expert and coach, TEDx speaker, um, a technologist, had a whole career in technology. Um, And I'm also an endurance athlete. Um, And in 2018, I had the opportunity to leave the corporate world and I created the Digital Detox Coach. Um, which is a, 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 a all-encompassing brand that covers all of the, the research, the science, the challenges and the techniques of how we can live more sustainably with our digital devices and technology, because we have to be connected to be online, yes. but we don't have to be connected all the time. Exactly. I think it's so important, you know, because we were just talking about the benefits, because like, from detoxing yourself from the digital world because you know so many people we've noticed even health wise you know people um all over the world have experienced health problems and obesity and stress related problems and communication problems just by focusing so much on our digital world our gadgets and and you know our computer screens and all the software that's available our uh, apple or iphones or you know there's so much out there but you know is it harming us or is it helping us well actually we um as humans we create technology mm-hmm. you know and we create technology to make life easier for us and to do more and you know exciting things yes um, and it's just one, it's the fact of being human. That's what we do. But it's got to a point now, and it has been getting to that point for some time, where technology has created some unintended consequences. Mm-hmm. And so some of those unintended cons- consequences are that we're physically less active. Yes. Um, 20% less active than we were in the 1960s. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to grow to 35% by 2030. Right. Now, that's not just digital technology, but that's a trend that's been happening for some time. But yes. when we're on our screens and we're looking at our smartphones, um, we're sitting down. Mm-hmm. We're, just, we're just not moving. Yeah. Um, so, so we now have a challenge. All of us have a challenge that we have to move about more. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just you know, one example. Um, we touched on before we, we, we opened the show about... Um, the U.S. Surgeon General saying uh, that we're more connected than ever. Being connected online during COVID was a lifesaver yes. um, for, for the world. Um, but being more connected, we turn out to have a loneliness epidemic. Yeah. And so being connected online isn't the same thing as being socially connected as humans, because we've had hundreds of thousands of years of evolution yeah. to live and move about on this this earth um and and to be socially connected so we don't get enough from being connected online so being connected online should be additional yes to other human connections that 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 we need Um, and there's a whole host of other things stress is is another one if we are constantly bombarded by external stimulation from our smartphones and our screens um and we we don't get enough time to think. We don't get enough time to relax. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't get enough time to recover from stress. Right. So if we've got a Zoom meeting, back-to-back Zoom meetings, all the rest, but all that happens is that stress levels go up during the day. And then we take that stress um, home with us. Yes. And it's, it's compounded because um, in my mid-30s, I had a, well before the iPhone, yeah. Um, I had a wonderful job in technology. 
but I suffered from stress and it wasn't talked about then. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I started to pass out of work. Oh, wow. And But one of the consequences of stress is that the heart rate increases, increases, increases to the point yeah. where you get the stars and all the rest of it. So I started to, after all the tests didn't find anything, I started to exercise, to exercise the heart so that I could cope and be more resilient to stress. Unfortunately, that was the start of me being very interested in endurance sport and doing Ironman and all all those other things. Um, But my heart just revs up and revs down again. And and I I race off the gun when I'm doing swim racing. And so my my stress resilience is sky high. (laughs) (laughs) So, So, but if we're not, if we if we don't think of the us as biological beings as being the mind and the body and and our connection with the earth, mm-hmm. um, then that's going to have implications yeah. to our, our sort of medium term and long term health. A hundred percent. I think you know you you were even mentioning before you know how people have become isolated after COVID. Now people, you know, were working at home, they're in their mm. houses. A lot of them still are working from home. And, you know, some people think it's great, but then you're isolating yourself in your home all the time. And you're constantly on your software, constantly on your computer. And <clears throat> what's happening is that people are losing their social skills. They're, they're having trouble connecting with mm. others. And I'm sure their anxiety is going up too, because nobody likes to be alone. We're not creatures that were meant to be by ourselves. We were, you know, humans were, were just like dogs or animals. We were meant to be in packs. We were meant to socialize. We were meant to be around others. And, you know, psychologically and also stress-wise, you know, I think those are things that could increase. And also, like we were mentioning earlier, I always use this this statistics, but it's so true. 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So we really have to take that into consideration too, when we're thinking about immersing ourselves into all this software and not giving ourselves time to detox from it. Yeah, I mean, I use digital detox and I, I said, well, it's a detox in the sense that um, over time, this continuous bombardment of, of external stimulation um, becomes toxic for us because yeah. we're not doing um, exercises. We're not um, communicating with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not necessarily getting enough sunlight. We're not going into nature. We're, yes. you know, we're not be eating a healthy diet. So all of those other things. So I, I always look at digital detox as an enabler. Yes. And although when some people say, well, digital de- detox, do I have to go away for the weekend and leave my phone at home? Or do I have to go away for a week? Um, it's great if you can do that, but you can't do it all the time. Yeah. So what I like to say is digital detox, um, rest and recovery snacks. So during the day, I mean, we have to work on our screens. Um, you you finish a, um, a Zoom call or finish a piece of work. You then take a break. Yeah. And the break might be five minutes, might be 10 minutes. Um, so it's a bit like a coffee break. Right. But you, but you get up, you move around, you grab a coffee, you speak to someone. Um, but what you don't do is get your smartphone out and look at that screen. I mean, that just that doesn't count. <laughs> so, so, so you do, you, you know, you just talk to lots of you know, if you can talk to people, but just, you know, go out into nature, go out into the park. Um, and and the body then recovers from yeah. stress and, and then you can go in into your, your next meeting. And the same is also true late at night. I mean, if you. Um, if you're on your smartphone last thing at night, just before you go to sleep, mm-hmm. um, it, all of that stimulation takes time to die down. Yeah. So, so your, your, your sleep is impacted because you've been overstimulated just before you've, you know, you've gone to sleep. And then of course, when you wake up, if you use your phone for an alarm and I know many, many people do. Yeah. Um, it, it sits there beside your bed. And 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 just the presence of a smartphone close to you, yeah, has a sort of cognitive pull. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you, if you go into a, a restaurant um, or or a park, or you sit on a train, um, just people have their phone and they just 
automatically they want to be busy and they just pick it up and they dive down into it. Yeah. The same happens if it's next to you. So let's say your alarm goes off or let's say you wake up in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll just have a quick look at my phone. Yeah. Right. The alarm goes off. Uh, OK, I'll switch my alarm up. Oh, I wonder what's happening on the news or, or social media or whatever. Yeah. And the problem problem with that, of course, is that when you wake up and you've had a good night's sleep, mm-hmm. you generally people feel their best. Yeah. And they say, well, what am I going to do with my day? Right. What am I going to plan to do? Yeah. But if you look at your 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 smartphone, if you look at the news, news is always negative. Yeah. It's what sells. Mm-hmm. Um, social media, everyone's doing better than you. Yes. They always are. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's hijacked all that good feeling that you had about planning planning your day. Um, so, so, yeah, so smartphones are sort of brilliant tools, but just take breaks from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, I think I don't think people realize the impact it has on us. You know, even at nighttime, they tell you not to go on your phone because your your mind will start overworking itself and it won't be mm. able to relax and get into a deep sleep. So many people suffer from insomnia, you know, and, you know, Probably one of the reasons is I guarantee you most people are looking at their phone or look or on the computer right before they go to bed. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go to sleep, I, it's, it, I find this, I, I've not seen the research on it, but um, if I want to go to sleep, I start reading a book, a, yeah. a physical book. And uh, sometimes it's only a couple of pages before yes. I go. Me too. Me too. It's the same way. I'll have I'll have one or two books that I really like that I haven't finished. I'll keep them by my bedside. And sometimes I just I could just read a couple of pages. And even though I like the book, I just I start mm-hmm. to see my eyes start to doze and, and I go to yeah, sleep. Relaxation, everything you go. It's uh... But if you don't have a good night's sleep, then um, we, we struggle with sleep because we're not conscious when we're asleep. But the, yeah. the brain is as active when we're asleep as we are when we're awake. But it does some really, really important things. Yeah. Um, it basically gets rid of lots of toxins. Yes. And, and that's important to our long term mental health and also um, degenerative uh, diseases like uh, dementia, et cetera. Yes. Uh, but importantly, it consolidates memories. And it does all of that housekeeping work. Yes. And so if you want to be really good at, uh, you know, at school, at college or at work, well, part of that is whatever you've tried to learn today needs to be consolidated. Mm-hmm. And you can only really consolidate through sleep cycles, good sleep cycles. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're not going to remember as much. And those memories and those associations yeah. um, won't be as good if you don't get a good night's sleep. I feel like, um, you know, it's so hard for people to detach themselves. It's become an addiction to a lot of people. Um, you know, what are some ways that you suggest, you know, because I think when you were mentioning about detoxing yourself from it, and then if you can't go away, just go out to nature. And they say sometimes that's the best therapy for you. And they'll suggest even that you take your shoes off and have your feet touch the grass, you know, and uh, what are your, your ideas and some of your methods and tools to help people kind of detach from, from, you know, digital detach and help detox themselves from there. So, so I've got a small challenge series. It, it's called um, Couch to 5K. Now, that's kilometers. So sorry about that. It's really 3.1. <laughs> we still use miles in the UK. Um, uh-huh. as, um, but it's based on the fact that there's a, a, a voluntary thing that started in the UK, which um, where volunteers went to a park and they organized a five kilometer run or a 3.1 mile run. Mm-hmm. And it was free. Anybody could do it. You could walk, you could take the dog. Um, And the idea was to get people off the couch. Yes. To do something from an exercise point and spread all over the UK. Millions of people have done it. Hundreds of thousands of people do it every on on Saturday. Um, There are, there are states in America that do it and there are places all around the world that do it. It's a totally voluntary free thing. So I took that as my inspiration so on the website, there's a, a free download. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to put your name in. There's right. no analytics, no nothing. Um, and it's a digital detox, Couch to 5K. And it's a nine-week program with a challenge 
every week. And there are some fun ones. So the funniest one, because it's devilishly hard, is the just one thing challenge. Mm -hmm. So you tell yourself before, I'm only allowed to do one thing on my smartphone. So I come from England, UK. We like to look at the weather. So I can only look at the weather. I can't do anything else for 10 minutes. So, right, want to look at go on, look, look at the weather. And you're you're sort of wanting to, you know, check your emails and do all that, but you can't. So the challenge is that you go can only do one thing. Yeah. Now, if you fail, then oh, don't beat yourself up. Just laugh. Just say, ha, my smartphone got the better of me that time. <laughs> And so, so, and and even give your smartphone a name to try and create some distance, mm -hmm. and say, "Ha, you got me that time, but you won't get me next time." <laughs> so, so the just one thing challenge, and there's a social media challenge. You have don't have to do it all the time. Just name, you know, which are going to be your digital detox days. Yeah. But the digital detox um, uh, snack, which is the rest and recovery snack, is the yeah. is a really important one where you plan in your day to have your digital detox snack yeah um coincide it with um your coffee break coincide it with your lunch and when you go to lunch um you know don't look at your smartphone you know talk to someone you've, you've said hello to but you've never really spoken to if you're going to a canteen right. or talk to some, someone at the coffee shop yeah. or a passerby um dog walkers always talk to people mm -hmm. runners always talk to people um Older people tend to talk more. When I was younger, I wouldn't say boo to a goose. <laughs> without being young. Um, but, but now I go out on my own. And some people won't even talk. But after the, you know, several weeks, they 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 cave in and they will say hello and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, just talk to other people. <laughs> do anything. But, you know, not on your phone during your breaks. But there's nine nine challenges. And at the end of the nine weeks, you've got all the tools you need to be able to strike that that balance. I find that, a, go ahead. Yeah, it's a continuous process. It's continuous because you've got to form habits in the same way that we form the habits of be, spending too long on our phones. We have to form the habits of taking the break from, from the phones. And it's great fun. Never beat yourself up, always laugh. And you know, give your give your smartphone a name and tell it off. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, it, sometimes I find myself. I had a long day. I don't even want to look at the phone anymore. I don't want to look at anything that's digital. And sometimes it's like bad habits. It's become like a habit. So you you're always used to going on it. You're always used to checking maybe the social media. You know, you're always used to doing this or that. And even though you don't really want to, like you've had enough for mm -hmm. the day you find yourself doing it because it's become that bad habit that you have. But, but also it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very easy. It takes no thinking at all. So it's, it's a habit, but it's a very easy habit to do. Yeah. Um, the, the, the big challenge with not doing it is it takes um, thinking resources, which takes yeah. energy and it takes effort. Right. Until until you create the habit, and habits can take uh, in excess of sixty days, yeah. and you have to do them regularly mm -hmm. to for, for them to form. Well, um, I've got a habit where I never used to do much running, and I used to do some triathlons, so mm -hmm. I needed to do some running. So I created a habit of running on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. to get up, go for a run. That's well over fifteen years ago, and I'm still doing it. It's a great habit because I I never think about it. I right. never even question what the weather's going to be. Yeah, it's now just a habit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's you know it's it's once you become consistent and you break the old habit, then the new habit I think kind of takes over, and then mm. you know you kind of can that that habit kind of disintegrates as long as you stay on track and you you know but if sometimes you mm -hmm. could do it for so long that it become a new part of your life that you're just used to you know it's yeah. i think the challenge comes when it's breaking that old habit like getting used to doing something new and so, consistent so you can help yourself so um environments trigger habits yes very true. um so if you don't want to use your phone, 
at night, then you can put it in a different room. Now, you've got to solve the alarm clock problem. But yeah. there are loads of lovely alarm clocks that have you know, lights that come on and, and, and the alarm is birds tweeting and all the rest of it. So you, can, <laughs> you can, I've got one, you can solve the alarm problem. Yeah. Uh, a clock problem. So, but you create an environment where you haven't got uh, the phone close to you because it will pull. Even yeah. if it's face down, um, it will pull. Um, in, in the TEDx talk that I did with a, a US colleague, mm -hmm. uh, um, she, we ended the talk by saying you have to create a sanctuary. Mm. And a sanctuary is a, a place in your, your home where there are no devices. Yes. So there's no smartphones, there's no smart speakers, there's no smart watches, there's no smart toys. And it's a sanctuary. Yeah. And and you you when you enter the sanctuary, it's an offline sanctuary. Right. So so if you if you want to you know let the environment help you, mm -hmm. then you create environments that that support what you want to do. Right. I feel like you know that's such a great um piece of advice because you know, if, you know, I, I created one room where I, I did it like a meditation room and it was just a very relaxed and set in. And it was just, you know, the carpet, I had the chakra bowls, I had everything that was relaxing. I made sure the, the pictures were, you know, very common and subtle and the colors and everything. And it was a great way to escape and just go into a, a different um, persona. Like, you know, like you start to feel different once you go into that area. And I, I feel like also like, you know, if you make that sanctuary room, it's great for it not to be cluttered. Find an area that's spacious too, I think. Mm. Yeah. And and of course, um, when you're with other people, if you're with your friends or mm -hmm. with your family, you can then say, well, collectively, do we do we value each other? Mm -hmm. You know, do we want to be with each other? And if we want to be with each other, should we all agree not to look at our phones when we're together? Yes. And very hard to do because, you know, it's automatic. It's, but you have to ask the question. If I'm if I'm talking to you and you say, wait a minute, Colin, I'm just going to look at my phone because there's something interesting here. Yeah. That's it. That says to me that I'm not important. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine imagine I'm, I'm a small child now and, and that's a parent saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, how does that feel? But even if you're with your friends, I mean, you're, the reason why you're physically with your friends is because you, you want to be with them. So yeah. it, it shouldn't be a big leap to say, yeah, and let's have a forfeit. Right. If anyone, you know, accidentally does, unless it's emergency, because, you know, there, there are always emergencies. Um, and have a forfeit, have a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. It's so true, you know, because like, if you if you give that message to your child, you know, you're basically telling your child, my phone is more important than you. You know, that's the the message, mm. you know, that that child is picking up. And, you know, you don't want that, you, you, you know, and especially because people's behaviors are repetitive. You don't want your children growing up and doing the same thing either. You know, you want to. Well, absolutely, absolutely. You need to break the cycle, but you can't. Uh, parents have to lead by example. Yes. Um, and there's there's there was lots of evidence to do with smoking. And um, it, children that had parents that smoked were more likely to smoke themselves. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't been, as far as I'm aware, the same sort of research on, on mobile phones. But you can quite imagine that if, if the parents are saying, don't use your mobile phone, you know, don't waste your time on that. But actually, that's what they're doing. And they're trying, trying to get around it by saying, oh, this is work. Yeah. You know? Well, what are you doing working so late? You know, where is your, where's your work life boundaries, for example? Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so you, you have to lead by example. So if you're going to have some rules in a family, right? Um, then it's for everybody. Yes, <laughs> very true, very true. Now, what made you really focus on this? Like after having a world where you focused your career on technology and you devoted so many years to that, and then you decided you realized that um, that it probably was taking a toll on you. Is that why that you you decided to focus on digital detox? Well, I, I focused on exercise because that that uh, created the resilience for stress. Um, but it, I've always been interested in where technology takes us. I was lucky enough to work on a lot of world-first technologies. Mm. 
and where there weren't any training courses and you 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 had to go with go with the flow um and so i'm always interested in where the next step is so when we won the tedx talk which was last march um we'd already included not last the march it could have been march before actually we'd already included um the impact of artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and, and that was before G- um chat gpt was launched right um so 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 my concern is this outsourcing of knowledge and skills mm-hmm. um Generative AI uses horrendous amounts of processing power to make calculations. And the more processing power it uses, the better calculations. And the more training you give it, the better calculations. Right. And being human, we project intelligence onto it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't know, it, it doesn't have any concept of itself or us, for that matter, their, their calculations. Yes. So, but... So more and more things that we would term thinking are being calculated right. by technology. So we're doing less and less thinking. We're, we have less and less skills because we've outsourced them. We don't need them anymore. Yes. And we have less ability to be creative, yes. less, less things to draw on for problem yes. solving. So, so my interest really is, okay, so we've got all this technology that does the, the boring stuff, the easy <laughs> stuff. Because it can't do the difficult stuff like moving about or making a coffee on the go or something like that. <laughs> um, so I think it's time to focus on how amazing it is to be human. Yes. And, and, and what makes us, you know, amazing biological creatures. Yeah. I mean, our brains, I read somewhere our brain was about one million times more power efficient than a supercomputer. Wow. But in order to do that, we need to sleep, we need to get the right food, and we need rest and recovery and all those sorts of things. But yeah. I think we it's now getting to be the time where we need to think, oh, now we've got to learn how to be human again. Yes. And and work as humans, because the boring stuff's being done. We right. used to do all the boring stuff, but that's yeah. that's going to be sorted. So humanity really ought to be focusing on how great it is to be human, a biological creature on the earth, yeah. with all the other biological creatures and plants and all the, the other things. Because the internet might be the most complex thing ever created by humans, but it's a bit simple compared to nature. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's consciousness? We don't know. So we don't know so much. Right. And so, so but we, we've we um, evolved for hundreds of thousands of years to survive on this earth. Yeah. Without knowing exactly. everything. Um, and that's an amazing thing. So my interest is, hey, it's a really great idea to be human. And there's so much we can we can do. And yeah, yeah technology is going to get rid of some of the boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I think you have a great point. I, I love, you know, why you, you you decided to make this your your true purpose. And and I, you know, I think it's so well needed in our society because our society we, you know, we, we have a lot of health issues, you know, and we have a a lot of people going through depression and we have a lot of people going through stress and, and, you know, a lot of this can be related to, you know, where our, our technologies are interfering with us being productive human beings, you know, not enjoying life to the fullest, you know, people are so focused on, you know, what the next thing to do is, how to make money, how to have a successful business, you know, what my I need next for my kids, you know, it, you know, and all these other things that go through our daily lives that they're focusing on the wrong things and not focusing on the most important thing, which is self-care themselves first. Yes, there's there was a wonderful study in the U.S., um, it, it, a longitudinal study, and they followed people and and many many people about 80 years and they were trying to find out well what's you know what sort of factors influence having um a healthy life uh longevity and all the rest of it and um good human connections Mm -hmm. sort of stood out amongst everything yeah so if you've got good human connections you know throughout your life Right. good friendships and those sorts of things that was the biggest indicator in this very very large um pool 
Right. And it's not surprising because the, the reason why we're social animals mm -hmm. and the reason why other animals are, are social in terms of packs. Yes. And actually, the reason why trees grow in, 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 in woods is because it improves survival. Mm -hmm. um, so by being together, um, we have a better chance of surviving. Yes. Um, and so, but survival is all about safety. Mm -hmm. And if we don't feel safe, we get stressed. Yeah. So it comes back to the link um, with stress. And one of the things about stress is it causes inflammation. And a lot of, and it's inflammation in the body and in the brain that causes a lot of these illnesses. So how, to, how can we reduce inflammation? Yeah. And everything is complex and it will never be one thing. Um, and it'd be a combination of things. Um, and we won't know which ones were better than others until they've finished the studies in 20 or 30 years time and say, ah, you shouldn't have done that one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way science works. <laughs> that's very true. Now, if you had to take what we talked about today and you had to emphasize on some important factors, what are some takeaways that you'd like to emphasize on that you think are very important for our listeners to learn and understand? So the, the really big takeaway, I think, is to appreciate that as an individual, we've got this mind-body connection. Yes. So if you don't look after your body, then your ability to uh, to think, to do to do other things, and have a healthy life is diminished. Now, um, there's a lot of luck in health, and whether you have a long life or whether you get unfortunately get illnesses. But what you can do is um, increase your activity. Right. to give yourself the best chance. So in the UK, um, and I think the same is true of the US, um, but the chief medical officer in the UK says that as, as a minimum, um, there's a very low bar, and I think it's 150 minutes of strenuous exercise by get, raising the heart rate. Okay. So it's not, it's not long. Right. Um, and I think the advice World Health Organization and in the US will be something similar. So the real big concept is, the mind and the body are the same thing. Yes. If you feel healthy, the next hill that you see won't look as steep. Mm -hmm. Because your body will be telling, telling your, your, your mind, yeah, I can get up there. It's not a problem. Um, the, the shop around the corner, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I don't need to get in my, well, I know and in the US, you, you get in your cars a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we do too um, in the but US. If, but if you're somewhere where you can safely walk to the shops, <laughs> you can say, well, actually, it's not far. I can easily walk to the shop. Yeah. Um, because your body will say, yeah, I can do that. Um, so, so the big message is the mind and the body are connected. You, we're not computers. We're not just software. We've had no... Um, software upgrade ever. <laughs> We've just evolved. Everything's still there. It's yeah. never been upgraded. I, I, I don't have a digital device that's never been upgraded. I mean, right. you know, it has regular security fixes <laughs> <laughs> before it goes obsolete. Um, so, it's this, so treat the mind and the body as one thing. And that's really the big message. And digital detox is an enabler. It says, gives you some tools to come off your smartphones and screens. Yeah. So that you've got a chance to, to think. And instead of become a follower of what's happening on the screens, you become the creator of what you really want to do. I love that. I think that's so important. I think that's a, a, a really good takeaway. The, all three takeaways are really good, but that's very important that we want to become a creator, that we, we don't want to follow what everybody else is doing, but we want to become our own creator. And I, I think that's so important. I think that's so important because being our own creator makes us a leader and we need more leaders in this world than we need the, do followers. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's great. Now, some of the services, what are some services that you offer on your website? So uh, on the website, um, I do speaker events, um, workshops or, uh, for organizations um, and uh, coaching. 
Um, and also I've got a US colleague, Anna Smith. She's based in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so um, all of those things are available in the US. And, and in fact, if we if we do a, a workshop in the US, then quite often uh, Anna leads those. Okay. Um, or we both do them. Um, or and then I support her in, in in other activities. So those are the services. Now, the funny part of all of this is I'm going to say you have to go to the website, <laughs> <laughs> on, which is online. Now, you know, if you if you're not on, online, you don't exist in the modern world. So yeah, we have to live with technology. So mm -hmm. it's on the website. Uh, there are free resources and there's an easy way to contact me. Excellent. And the website, website address, of course, is uh, the digital detox coach uh .co .uk or com they both end up at the same place <laughs> oh excellent i love it this has been amazing colin i i love the information you supplied i think it's such an important topic that needs to be addressed especially in our society i think people are too much on their smartphones too much on the computer and even people who have jobs that force them to be behind a desk or force them to be on Zoom meetings constantly. They have to learn how to make time for themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, like you were saying, it boils down to that self-care and really taking care of your mind and your, and your body, you know, and, and, you know, and that comes first. And, you know, I think the excuse people say, well, I don't have time. Everybody has time. You have to learn how to make the time, but just detoxing yourself, you know, digitally detoxing yourself can, I think, improve people's life tremendously and help them, you know, and even maybe improve their mental health and their connections and their stress levels and, and, and their overall health, you know, um, I think it's very important. So I think what you're doing is is great. And I I think you, you provided a whirlwind of, of valuable information today. And I thank you so much for being on the show. No, thank you very much for inviting me. It's been, it's been fun, which is the most important thing. <laughs> yes, it's the most important thing. Yes, it is. Well, you, you have a great day, Colin. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye.